Hey, I'm John, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to change out your filament feeder on the longer LK5 Pro. This process should be sort of similar for most FDM 3D printers, but your mileage may vary depending on what machine you have. All right, let's get started. There are a ton of different extruders, also called filament feeders, available on the internet. I chose to go with the aluminum metal extruder that is sold by longer for this upgrade. The reason why I went with aluminum versus another plastic one is because the metal one is going to provide more strength, it's going to last longer, and it's going to overall hold up better. I'll have a link to the exact product that I bought in the description below, but there, like I said, there's a ton of different options, so look around and find the one that may work best for you. My biggest complaint about this extruder is that it came with zero instructions. No information on what screws went where or how to use it the correct way. Hopefully this video will provide you enough guidance along with some tips and tricks that I figured out after like an hour of fiddling with this thing to get it installed the correct way. It comes with everything that you would need, mounting screws, the extruder frame with a board intake hole, a bushing, a spring, a brass extruder drive gear, some additional Bowden tube fittings, and a few other things that you're probably not going to need. You'll probably notice that it came with another filament sensor. And this filament sensor has an extension on it because the extruder itself isn't as large as the plastic one. I spent a lot of time trying to use that filament sensor with the extension and I had to come up with a different solution and I'll get to that in a little bit, but you're not going to need that part because it is not going to work the way you want it to work. Once you've got all of your parts taken out, now it's time to switch gears and remove the old extruder. First things first, let's remove the Bowden tube. Next, remove the four screws that are on the top of the extruder to disconnect it from that metal plate. A word of warning, learned firsthand what you're about to see, the only thing holding the actual motor to that metal plate are the screws that are on the extruder itself. So as you remove those, you might want to support the motor a little bit. I did not do that, and the motor fell when I got the screw loose. Now, it didn't seem to cause any issues with the printer. I still haven't had any issues with the motor itself, but those wires aren't super thick, so better to be safe than sorry and go ahead and support that motor while you're unscrewing everything. Now's a great time to swap out your brass extruder drive gear. The gear has two little screws on each side. Those screws, when tightened, help it grab onto the cylinder that it's attached to. To remove the old one, you just loosen those two screws and lift it right off. Then you put the new one on flush with the top of the cylinder and then just tighten those screws and your new one's on. Next, let's grab the motor and reattach it to that metal piece with the extruder itself. You're going to do that with three of the four screws. The fourth screw, the one down in the left hand corner, you're going to wait on that for another piece. While you're watching what can only be described as possibly the most enthralling time lapse in the history of YouTube, now's a great time if you're enjoying my content to drop a comment below and let me know what type of upgrade you'd like to see next. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button, go ahead and turn the bell on for notifications as well. It is important to make sure that the screw you put in the back left corner is the screw that is completely flat on the top because you are going to need something to go right over that screw. Now's when instructions would have really come in handy. Up at the top right hand corner, there's supposed to be a screw there to go into the spring to kind of just help keep it from popping off. 
I wasn't sure which screw to use, so I just picked one that fit, put it in there. I haven't had any issues with it since, so I guess it worked. Now it's time to complete the assembly of the extruder itself. For that, you're going to attach the wheel arm to the rest of the mechanism. I lost the footage of me showing you how to connect the wheel and the extra screw to the arm. It's super simple. Just take the wheel, put it right over the hole, put a screw in, tighten it down fairly tight, but it doesn't have to be super tight. And then you're going to take another screw. Once again, no instructions, so just a screw that fits. You're going to put it on the inside of that arm. Those, that screw and the other guide screw that you put in before are going to help hold the spring in place. Then you're going to take the final screw. You can't miss it. It's red. And you're going to put that in the bottom left-hand corner. And that's how you're going to complete the assembly of everything. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I kind of went off the beaten path a little bit. You'll notice in this image that I swapped out the screw that's holding the wheel on the extruder with the screw that came with the plastic extruder. I just liked it better. I also absolutely hated the filament sensor extension that came with the extruder kit. So I scoured the internet. I found a 3D printable version of a modification bracket, I guess you could call it, that actually worked a lot better. I'll include a link in the description below for that bracket if you'd like to print your own before you put on the new extruder. I like this bracket better because it allows you to screw directly into the filament sensor and then you connect it to that metal plate that the extruder's connected to using the two screws that are right next to the lead screw for your Z axis. Now you're in the home stretch and one of the final steps is to connect the Bowden tube back to the extruder. It did come with new fittings. I didn't swap the fittings out and I don't have any problem, but if you wanna swap them out, you can. That's really just up to you. You're now officially done and the final step is to load some filament and run it through and see how it works. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did and you want to show your support, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on notifications so you get alerted when I make another one. Until next time.